What's up guys, I'm Bacon here, welcome back to more Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2. In the last episode, we um we upgraded to a new class of both race cars and police enforcement. And in this episode, we're going to be jumping into these new events. I ended off with a police mission last time, so I'm going to start out with a racer mission this time. <coughs> um, also, I started on a bit of a tangent yesterday. Um about the differences between the GameCube and PS3 versions of Hot Pursuit 2. Um, <clears throat> so, since there isn't a lot to talk about during generic races, I'm gonna go on a, a little more about that. Um, <clears throat> honestly, what I found to be the uh, <laughs> biggest... What I found to be my biggest uh, complaint, honestly, like... <clears throat> I can tolerate a different menu layout. I can tolerate slightly less impressive graphics. I can even tolerate it. I can certainly tolerate a different control scheme. What really bugged me was quite a few of the vehicles and maps that were in the PlayStation 2 version. I didn't seem to notice in the in the GameCube version. I'm not just talking not immediately available. It showed locked events, and there weren't nearly as many. I mean, maybe more become more show as you progress. I didn't really get very far, so if I'm wrong about that, please let me know. <laughs> of course, I won't be reading this for reading. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I won't be reading those comments for a long time as of recording this. Uh, recording this the same night I recorded the last episode, and the next episode, probably. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, fudge, I completely lost my track. Right, um, <laughs> also, another thing that uh, really took me off was the drastic difference in the unlock systems. Hot Pursuit, or the GameCube version of HP2 used a, um, hmm, hmm used what am I trying to, used a credit system kind of like what you'd see in like Gran Turismo or for, or earlier Forza's earlier or any Forza games really those kind of, those kind of simulator racing games and I feel like those work for those but and maybe if I just gone into that blind with that I wouldn't mind but compared to the system that Hot Pursuit 2 for the PS2 used it feels so generic because so many racing games use the uh, credit system where you just you do races, you earn credits, you spend the credits to unlock stuff. Whereas Hot Pursuit One had an, had a very interesting achievement system for unlocking. Like many thing, many tracks and cars required very specific achievement requirements to unlock them, and I really like that. It, it it made it it made it feel more worth it when you unlocked those really awesome cars or really fun tracks because it felt you felt like you really deserved it as opposed to just and like you can just grind on a really easy event to get a lot of credits to get something really hard if something was difficult to get you had to man up and do whatever you had to do as opposed to just being cheap and grinding on a really easy mission um Although, on that note, I've been grinding on a, about this for a little while. Um, I, at this point, I don't have that much more to say. <coughs> because I didn't really give that game much of a chance, to be honest. I loved the PS2 version, and... Wait, what? That's the finish line? <laughs> wait, I'm confused. What just happened there? <laughs> Did I? Okay, I still got second place. I was gonna say, if all those guys pass me and... Because, like, three people passed me in that crash animation. I was gonna say, if they all counted as placing after me, I would have been really mad. But I, I, I'm fine with silver. I also said silver place. Um, but, uh, yeah. As, as I was um, saying, though... What was I saying? Well, if I can't remember, it clearly wasn't that important. And we get some new equipment. 
You have been granted use of the new EMP system. The EMP system fires a directed electromagnetic pulse from your car to a targeted suspect. The system requires an active lock-on to correctly track the target. Once fired, you are required to keep the target car within range and line of sight for the tracking system to engage. The EMP is probably one of my favorite weapons, and also the most practical. Um, because... <laughs> mm -hmm. um, <coughs> With the spice strip, you gotta get right in front of them. The, um... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Roadblocks are very iffy, and especially in these, where... <laughs> um... The more elaborate the Interceptor AI gets, the more useless roadblocks become, to be honest. Because it's very easy for them to just avoid them. <coughs> I find EMPs are some of the most reliable. Uh, you'll notice also that it says helicopter. <laughs> um, we'll get into what that does later. The helicopter is an interesting one, but if you're not careful, I find the helicopter does like to backfire sometimes. <coughs> Speaking, um... Though, of different versions of games. <laughs> Obviously, this has a PlayStation 2... A PlayStation, 2 PlayStation 3, which is the version I'm playing. Uh, or, or an Xbox 360. But I actually found that the... I actually ended up getting this game on my iPod Touch a while ago. And I have to say, I'm actually quite impressed at how much of a... Oh! At how reliable of a recreation the mobile version of this game actually okay um okay here we're getting into what's gonna make most of these interceptor missions really painful the jammer that will disable your weapons and cut off your mini map for a period of time that can become really annoying sometimes, as in, uh, when it's a one-track area like this, it's not too big a deal. Worst thing that can happen is they use a jammer while you're trying to lock on an EMP. <laughs> Speak of the devil. But, um, in later, uh, interceptors, when you're in more urban environments, that can become really annoying because what I find they will often do is um, is they like to use the EMP right before a or EMP use the system jammer right before they take a turn or like right before an area like this where there's alternate paths they could take and if you don't have visual contact with them. It's very easy to lose them at these moments. Um, I, you notice I actually turned my sirens off there. I find um, that can sometimes be better because it, it can be a little bit tough sometimes to see them. And when taking your eyes off them for a split second can mean the difference between passing or failing a mission. You want every bit of sight you can get. I say as I crash and lose my contact with the- okay, I can't go that way. Oh my goodness, I just noticed my health bar. Um, yeah, okay. That's another problem with these sometimes, is... Alright. Oh my god. I'm doing so terribly here. Um, we might actually see the first case of a failed interceptor mission, or actually the first case of a failed mission at all. But, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, um, mobile version of Hot Pursuit, I actually found a very reliable recreation. Um, doesn't have as many missions, and obviously the graphics aren't quite as good looking, but I actually found for being, for being something that could be run on, like, a fourth-gen iPod Touch, which is really all I had, because 
uh, which I just got secondhand off my sister when she upgraded to the iPhone ages ago. Um, well, am I gonna get it? Ooh. Okay, I have to be really careful here. Oh crap, we took a different route. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, I just gotta keep them in my sights. Okay, it's just going down that way. <laughs> Both of us are hanging on by a thread. Like my health bar is like non-existent right now. Um. That was weird. <laughs> it looked like he stopped and then, so like, I like stopped to see if they were turning the other way and then they just zipped past me. Um, I think they exhausted all their jammers. Okay, as long as I don't hit anything, I think I got this here. Yes! Mm -hmm. Alright. Mm -hmm. That was a very close call. Uh... Believe me though, I'm sure you are going to see your fair share of me failing some of these interceptor events. <coughs> because they can get pretty brutal in the later stages of this game. <laughs> and with that, we've been promoted. <coughs> but anyway, yeah, if you have like a tablet or an iPhone or, or if you're just the kind of person who likes to play a lot of mobile games, I would recommend picking this up. The con For being a, a uh, mobile racing game, I found the controls actually quite tolerable. Um, and like, I had played a couple of racing games on handhelds and I find most of the time they're ra rather hassle-ish, a bit of a hassle. Uh, but I actually found the controls for this one quite nice. And the graphics looks pretty good. The gameplay was solid. Had all the same weapons. Not as many events or cars, but pretty good uh, standard. I, I, I would recommend it, honestly. <laughs> Built like an athlete, the Gran Turismo S Automatic maintains the purity of the original's lines while providing power, driving pleasure, and still has space for four adults. When revving above 3,000 RPM on the move, the exhaust valves open to allow the exhaust gases to escape more quickly, creating a lower back pressure and a peak power of 440 bhp. The effect of the self-adapting gearbox is a smooth ride at low revs and consistent power delivery at high revs. New side spoilers add to the dynamic look, and new 20-inch wheel rims that mirror the design of the famous Trident logo render Pininfarina's work of art even more intriguing. The grille has concave vertical slats that give the appearance of inhaling air even when stationary. Sorry for the random cut there, I just had to quickly go do something. Anyway, um... I wasn't actually paying that... Okay, rapid response. I actually wasn't paying attention to what event I selected, I was too busy talking. Silly me. Uh, yeah, it's been a while since we did a rapid response mission, so I guess it's good we get this one. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a big fan of these missions, but trying to keep it, keep a mix of events. <coughs> so, so watching these videos doesn't become stale and just a collection of me doing the same kind of event over and over. This thing, this is a rather touchy car. I'm gonna turn my sound off because during these they can actually be a little distracting, I find. Um, <coughs> and I'm talking quietly again. My bad. I'm curious how long I can go without hitting anything. <laughs> Oh, I almost 
jinx that right there. Close. So far, so good, but we'll see how long that lasts. Yeah, I, I really don't have that much to talk about during rapid response missions because there really isn't that much action going on. I don't really want to talk too much about other stuff because, because of how precision demanding these events are, I really want to be able to focus on the game more during these than any other type of event. Even the other time trials, because at least in the other time trials, if you don't get penalized for hitting things. <laughs> these are the most focus demanding events, so I may be a bit more quiet during these than I am in most. I will admit, commentating this game is a bit of a challenge, because... <laughs> but <laughs> that's part of the reason I chose it, though. And then because this isn't the kind of game you typically see a let's play of. I mean, sure, it's easy to find gameplay footage of these kinds of games, but you don't really see a traditional let's play of these sorts of games. And even when you do see a racing game let's play, it's usually a racing game with a much greater focus on story. This one really doesn't have any story to speak of. It has a it's like, has an explanation of the rules of the world, and then says, have fun. So... Oh! Ah! So much for my flawless run. But it really leaves out to the commentator to make the Let's Play what it is. Um, which, I will admit, is definitely a challenge, but it's a fun challenge. And honestly, if I found I wasn't enjoying myself, I wouldn't have I wouldn't be going this far. And like I I've played through this game a few times. I, I enjoy it. And that's that's the main reason you choose that's the main reason for any game that you love to play, right? It's a game that you enjoy playing. <coughs> and though I don't do this for the attention and as, as I, it'll, it'll definitely be nice once I build up a bigger audience, but getting views isn't the reason I do these. I'll do one more of these, and then I'm noticing the um, comp missions are blooming quite a bit. Actually, yeah. Oh boy, the Corvette. If I remember correctly, this thing is slidey as heck. <coughs> mm. Mm -hmm. Um, speaking of the Corvette, I think there's a really weird achievement in this one called, like, Wet in the Vet, which is, like, for, it has something to do with driving a Corvette in the rain. I, I, I'll, I'll, I might check, uh, what exactly that is, because I'm a bit curious. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been doing a lot of cop missions in this episode, so I'll probably do a lot. Of, I'll probably dedicate most of next episode to racing missions. <laughs> anyway, once again, another rapid response. So this one's going a bit faster. You know, technically. Technically, I did go all of the last mission without getting a penalty. Because um, I only I only had one collision, and it was a full-on crash. Meaning that I that the game didn't give me a time penalty for it. So, Okay, did you see that? That guy just came to a, like an instant stop in the middle of the road. That was weird. Mm -hmm. That uh, kind of reminds me of um, something really hilarious that's on Hot Pursuit 2 once. Um, if by any chance you saw when my channel was really young, you may remember a, a silly little glitch video called Watch the Red Van. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
unfortunately, when all my videos went missing, I had to re-upload most of them. I wasn't, I was unable to find that one. I think that's because, um, jeez. I think the reason for that is because I think I, oh my god! I think I <laughs> had that one on my old computer, um, and when I had to do all the re-uploads, it was on my new computer. Well, that was atrocious! That was absolutely horrid. But... Whatever. Got one new reward. <coughs> Dodge Charger. <coughs> get in, get reborn. Pardon me. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> with that, I think I'm going to end this episode here. Next episode, we're probably going to do a lot more uh, racer-based missions to make up for the large quantity of police missions we did in this episode. <laughs> See you guys next time.